Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is the tech that I'm just most excited about for the rest of this year, just for the rest of 2015. This is a completely subjective list, so your list could be completely different from mine. In fact, it probably is, and that's kind of the point. Uh, and no one's gonna watch this video two or three years from now, but I'm really excited about this stuff now, so I'm gonna get it out there. First thing is the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. We already know Samsung has the Galaxy S series, and the Galaxy Note series. The Galaxy S gets the updates in the first half of the year with the newest software features and a reasonable size form factor and new specs. But then in the second half of the year, we get the new Galaxy Note, which tends to have all the software features that made the Galaxy S so awesome, but in a larger form factor that allows a bigger, better display, bigger, better camera optics, and often a much bigger, better battery. The absolute worst thing about the Galaxy S6 Edge that I use as a daily driver right now is the battery life. And we did also late this year see a Samsung Galaxy S6 Active with a much larger battery in that big ruggedized body. But I'm still excited anyway for the Note 5. Uh, hopefully it'll, again, get rid of the Samsung fake leathery materials and bring back the real metal. This probably also means if it's built like the Galaxy S6 that it will not have expandable storage and it won't have a removable battery. But if the battery is big enough, I'm okay with that. And this is a 128 gig phone, so I'm kind of fine. So the second thing on my list is the OnePlus 2. And the OnePlus 1 was known for being so cheap. It was known for being a super low price budget phone. It looks like the OnePlus 2 is not going to follow in these exact footsteps. It's not gonna be super budget. But if it continues to run near stock Android, then I like what I see here anyway. OnePlus has been releasing these teasers of the specs. It's part of their whole marketing campaign. So every couple of days, they'll announce something new about the OnePlus 2. So far, what we have is the Snapdragon 810, whether it overheats or not, we'll see, uh, the USB Type-C port, and a fast and quick fingerprint reader. And we've also seen some other murmurings of, you know, an all metal build and a huge battery and a quad HD display. And I also have one that you haven't seen announced yet. Uh, you'll probably want to keep an eye on Twitter. If you're following me, you'll be the first to see that. Hashtag hype. But this OnePlus 2 is shaping up to be not really a phone that OnePlus 1 owners upgrade to, but more of a new sort of closer to a normal flagship and may even have multiple versions of it. We've seen rumors of one with four gigs of RAM and one with three gigs of RAM and possibly a mini version that hit multiple price points. It's a bit more traditional, but it's still from a company that's kind of shaking things up. So the number three thing on my list is the next Nexus. And this is a bit of a tricky one because we know almost nothing right now about that next phone. We don't know what it'll look like. We don't know what it'll be called, who will make it. All we know is that it usually comes out around September, October, November of the year. That's all we got. There have been rumors that Motorola, who made the Nexus 6, would come back and make the next Nexus and probably make it in a bit of a smaller form factor. Then we heard rumors that LG would come back and bring back a revamped updated Nexus 5 type of phone, which is even smaller, but brings sort of updated specs and a better camera. And then we've heard rumors that it would be made by Huawei, a Chinese company. So I don't think anyone really knows yet. I'm pretty excited though, because no matter what Google does, it's gonna run the latest version of Android M. It's gonna be a clean stock Android experience. It's probably gonna have USB type C and it always seems to sort of shape the direction that Android will go. And it's a, sort of a showcase for what the OS is capable of. Next up on my list at number four is the Moto 360 version two when it comes out. And I'm excited about this particular smartwatch from Motorola because we've seen the original Moto 360 actually become sort of a pioneer. Uh, it was one of the first smartwatches to come out last year, and it was the one that really got people talking about smartwatch design. Ever since then, dozens of Android Wear smartwatches have come out, and they're all pretty similar in terms of specs, and they're all running near identical software, but the thing that separates them all now is their design. It's how they look on the wrist. Some of them are much closer to a traditional timepiece look, while others gravitate more towards a super sleek modern look. Now we have things out like the Apple Watch and Pebble Time, and things are starting to branch out and design is starting to shake up a little bit. So I'm now curious to see what Motorola is going to do with the second generation of their smartwatch, which I'm pretty sure is going to be coming out in the second half of this year. And last but not least on my list is the Sony RX100 Mark IV. Judging solely by the spec sheet, this thing is everything I want in a pocket camera. Last year, I crowned the RX100 Mark III the best pocket camera on planet Earth. It has that super high resolution, large Sony sensor, a wide and fast Carl Zeiss zoom lens, great 1080p video, really great photo quality, great dynamic range, 
articulating LCD screen on the outside, a quality viewfinder, which is rare for a pocket camera, quiet, fast autofocus and shutter, all in a stealthy, all black aluminum body. I've, I've used it a ton and I love it. Actually, my college's ultimate Frisbee highlights for the whole season. The season was entirely shot on an RX100 Mark III. So if you wanna watch it, if you wanna see 60 frames per second uh, ultimate Frisbee highlights, then the link is below that like button. The RX100 Mark IV is supposed to be all of that, and then a new processor to enable things like 4K video and super slow motion video at, oh, I don't know, about a thousand frames per second. Pretty excited to test this thing out. So there you have it. If you thought the first half of this year was awesome, wait till the sec, wait till the, that doesn't make sense. I didn't think of an outro for this video. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any other things for tech that you're excited for for the rest of this year, feel free to leave it in a comment section right below that like button and we can talk about it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.